Hello everybody, this will be your video over unit 3.2. Um, this video is a little more complex, um, but there are videos that demonstrate all these techniques, so don't worry about that. Make sure you watch the demonstrations of how to do different types of stretches, but in this one I'm just going to explain the, uh, the science behind it, okay? So let's switch over and get started. Um, so muscles have physiological not just the muscles, but parts of the muscles and the brain all have physiological responses to stretching, okay? So <clears throat> inside your muscles, you have what are called muscle spindles. And those muscle spindles um, send a signal to your brain anytime you're getting a stretch of a muscle. And they basically tell the brain, hey, this muscle is getting stretched, it's getting lengthened, and it might tear. So instead, Instead of allowing the stretch to occur, the brain sends a signal to contract the muscle, okay? And that's called a stretch reflex. So this video kind of explains it, and you can watch it if you'd like. It's a little bit complex, um, or if my explanation works for you, that's fine. So what this is showing here is a reflex hammer. Um, when your doctor hits you uh, just under your patella on um, the quadriceps tendon, OK, um, what it does is it sends a signal to your brain that your leg is being stretched Ok, because it takes the muscle and makes it longer for just a second by pushing that patellar tendon down. Your brain, when everything is working right, will immediately send a signal to the muscle spindle, will send a signal up to the brain. The brain will send a signal back down and the quadriceps will contract. That's called the stretch reflex. When there's a quick stretch of a muscle, the, the natural response of the muscle spindle communicating with the brain and the brain communicating back is to make that muscle contract. So we need to understand that um, because it can, it can make stretching hard for people, especially if you try and do it too quickly, or um, sometimes they'll just naturally kind of fight you if you're stretching them. So you don't get as good a stretch as you might be able to because the stretch reflex is kind of fighting against you. There are ways to kind of trick that though, and that's what this um, section is really about. Um, there's another part of the body that's like the muscle spindle in a sense that registers not stretch, but contraction, okay? So you have muscle spindles and you have Golgi tendon organs, and I know you guys have learned a little bit about those, but the joke, the GTO or the Golgi tendon organ is located basically where muscle starts to form tendon, right? And there's several of these located in that area. And it's another protective me mechanism to protect your muscle. What it does is it recognizes increasing tension from contraction of the muscle, right? So like if you've ever been carrying a box when you're moving or something like that, and you've got your biceps flexed the whole time and you're carrying that box, and all of a sudden your muscles just give out, that's the Golgi tendon organ sending the message up to your brain that this muscle's been contracting too long and it's there's too much tension on it as it try and holds the weight of the box and it will cause the muscle to just let go completely. And so um, it's basically almost the opposite response in a lot of ways of the um, muscle spindle um, instead of causing the muscle to contract, it'll cause the muscle to completely relax. So the cool thing about that is, is we can use, we can get the Golgi tendon organs to send a mess message to <clears throat> the brain. And if we can get that to happen, the muscle is naturally going to be able to relax, right? And so we can use that to help improve our stretch of the muscle. So there are two different types of uh, times when the Golgi tendon will fire and, and react and cause muscle relaxation. If it happens in the muscle that um, you're using, right, that's called autogenic inhibition. So going back to the biceps, I'm carrying a box, right? And if <clears throat> the, the biceps are the muscles that I'm firing, and then all of a sudden they let go, that's autogenic inhibition, okay? <clears throat> the same, auto just means the same. 
So the same muscle that I'm firing is the same muscle that's going to let go and relax, okay? There's a trick to this, though, because it can happen in the opposite muscle, too. So I can fire my triceps, and if I keep firing my triceps, my body still sends the signal to all my muscles, basically, in that area to relax. Um, that's a little bit simplistic, but that's kind of how it works. So I could be firing my triceps, and all of a sudden, my brain sends the signal, and my biceps would still relax. Okay, because it's just going to relax all the muscles in that area. And so you can use this to kind of trick muscles to relax. You can either say, okay, we're going to have you fire your biceps for 10 seconds, and then it will naturally want to relax a little bit because your brain started sending, getting that signal from the Golgi tendon organs. Or <clears throat> if there's a, like if the biceps is kind of tender or sore and you don't want to contract it, you could actually have them contract their tricep muscle for 10 seconds and it would still relax the biceps muscle. Okay, so that's called reciprocal inhibition, kind of the opposite side. So you're having the opposite, your antagonist muscle fire to stretch the agonist muscle. There, I know that gets a little bit complex. I have videos demonstrating what those look like. So, um, Thera therapists can use that, those um, inhibitions to impre incre improve stretching and increase range of motion. Um, there are different ways to do that. One is called a hold relax stretch. Hold relax just means you keep that person firing isometrically. So you would have somebody like, if we're talking about the biceps, you would have somebody bring their biceps into flexion and then you would resist them for 10 seconds isometrically as they contract that biceps muscle. Then you would have them relax and pull them into a stretch of that biceps muscle. Because the muscle has been firing and the Golgi tendon organ has been sensing that pressure, the brain has started sending this, the relax response to that muscle. So it will help you get a better stretch you won't be fighting that stretch reflex. Hopefully that makes sense. You can do the same thing with a contract relax. Um, and all that means is instead of holding it isometrically, holding the same position, you're going to have somebody do a full biceps curl really slowly. And, and then when they get to the end of that action, then you're going to have them relax and you're going to move them into a stretch. Either one is contracting that biceps muscle. It's telling those, it's, it's um, creating that pressure and the Golgi tendon organs are sending the signal up to the brain to tell it to relax. Um, so you can use that um, to help stretch, right? So hold, relax. That would be an isometric firing of the muscle with an agonist contraction um, right, so hold, relax, agonist contraction, you're having the muscle you want to stretch, agonist contraction, firing isometrically, and then you're going to use it for a stretch, okay? A lot of terms, but if you understand what's going on, it can make sense, okay? There are ballistic stretches. Ballistic stretch is a, a rapid, forceful movements at high speed and high intensity. There are times to use those, but in general, they're not recommended because they increase, and it says it here, the chances of muscle soreness and injury. So this is a video that shows ballistic stretching. Um, and there are times when it can be useful, but it's not a technique we're going to use in this course because in general, it's not really a good idea, right? There are other types of stretches. So static stretching is just the normal stretching that you used to do in PE or before track or before football or, or whatever. Um, it's, it's a good, um, it works, it's effective, but maybe not as effective as if we use those PNF techniques that we're going to talk about to trick the brain. So um, I've, there's, um, I really go over static stretches really well here in these videos down here. 
um, actually in the section before. And then here are videos over how to do the PNF stretches. So I'm not going to go over this part in detail. Here are some different dynamic stretches. Let's talk about dynamic stretches for a sec. So dynamic stretching is just um, stretching through movement. Instead of holding a single position, see a static stretch, you just kind of get that muscle and you make it longer and you hold that position for 15 to 60 seconds, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Dynamic stretching is a little bit opposite. It's where you take that same muscle and try and lengthen it, but by movement. Okay, so you're gently, slowly moving it. They're not really fast activities. You can do forward and backward kicks. This part is stretching the hamstring right here. And then if, as you go back, you're stretching the quadricep, right? Um, inchworms, you're really stretching parts of the back okay those back extensors and then a little bit the flexors as you go down so you're stretching back extensors and even the hamstrings some right here and then you kind of crawl out and then you crawl back up into that position and so you're really stretching those back muscles and to some extent even the flexors in the front here but mostly it's focusing on your back extensors and your hamstrings um Scorpions, right? You're doing stretches of your abdominals for the most part, okay? Um, but they're, they're rotating those legs back and forth slowly to kind of stretch those uh, lunges, walking lunges here. You're really stretching this part. So you're stretching rectus femoris and the hip flexors. Um, and then you switch legs and you're just slowly doing walking lunges, um, lateral lunges. You're really stretching um, your um, hip abductors and TFL along this side, right? And so um, lunge with a twist, you're still stretching your flexors, but your um, abdominals and um, back rotators as well. So anyways, PNF techniques. I go over those right here. I'm not going to get into that in depth again. Um, please really, really study the static stretching videos and these PNF stretching videos. It's the part, it's one of the things that people don't get. So really study it, watch these videos. If you don't get it, make sure you contact me this week before you make your video demonstrating it, right? I can set up a time with you where I make sure that you get it down, okay? Um, but anyways, that's the end of this video and I'll talk to you later.